Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Kicking off the day, the tinker day, and you pull and pay. Going to see if I can get a couple more parts off of that white 850. Blue NA. I need an engine mount up here for one of these cars. That one's got some tearing in it, so I'll pass on that. Let me go check that wagon. Well, looked like somebody needed the window motor. Or they think they did. I've never seen windows go bad. But... They weren't smart enough to get the door panel off, so they just destroyed a good door panel to get that window motor out. How interesting. Whoo wee, some people's kids. This dash pad is still here. It's in relatively good shape. It's got a little rising there and a little rising there, but it probably looks better than most people's. Got the oil cooler block off plate, some other bits from this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I might come back for the carpet in this car. This stuff is so nice. And dang, it's got a Volvo windshield that looks like it doesn't have any blemishes in it. I might come back for that too. No chips or cracks. That's all for today on this. I'm going to go over to Jack's. I need to take some parts over there and dump them off. I forgot to throw them in the car. And also check a 960 over there. See if the headlights can be taken off. A couple other bits from Jack's that will be cheaper than getting them from here. Here we go, folks. Back at Two Stack Jack's. I talked to them about that yellow car that was there. They were about to crush. They said they tried to crush that car and it broke their machine. Their machine is totally gone. Looking to buy a new one. Well, it's been about a month, people. Nothing has changed at Two Stack Jacks. Eh, guess this road's a little cleaner. That's a good thing. I'm going to go down here and check a couple things, hopefully grab a couple parts, avoid some mosquitoes, and get out of here. Trying to see if these lenses come off this light. Look like they will, but you got to get the light out somehow. So I took the grill out. I'm getting ready to take these side pieces off the lights. Then I'll take those nuts off the lights. Then I'll see if I can get the light out so that I can try to see if I can get the lens off it. Feels kind of glued in there. I got the top off. It's not prying off. But that's a decent grill there. Not great, but it's decent. Hold this ETM. Not sure if this will be a good one for Byron's car. It's the same year. But some of these ETMs are just not good to have. Cord and stuff looks good. So maybe it's been replaced. And I got a little bit of a harness. Because he's got a harness issue on his. Going to tinker with Panther just a little bit. I got some stuff I need to clean out of it. I'm gonna start hauling boxes to storage, but I'm going to readjust my parking brake once again. Normally you gotta adjust that two or three times after you fix the parking brake cable. I thought it was good, it's, it's good, but it's not good enough. I gotta pull it all the way up to get it to hold the car, so I'm gonna adjust it. Let me get the jack, jack stand, pull the wheel, adjust it. Put the wheel back on, yada, yada, yada. Handbrake was pulled up. This left one wasn't grabbing at all. So let's see what's going on here. Get this thing adjusted right and grab it. The adjustment here is fine. Either the cable came loose in here or the cable came loose up there at the handle. I got to figure out which one. Let me check up here at the handle. Kind of a crazy thing. After several adjustments, it's working now. Right now, it's adjusted where it rolls backwards, but when I roll it frontwards, 
sometimes it catches. But if I go inside right now, after pulling the handle, letting the handle up and down about 10 times, it seems to be adjusted right. But before, if I tried to turn it frontwards, it would grab. So if I go in there now and pull the handle, it grabs nice and tight. So there's the handle pulled about three quarters of the way up. And out here, it is very tight. <clears throat> now when I release it, see what happens. Oh, I got it real tight. Can't hardly release it. <clears throat> it won't spin. There it goes, spin it forward. Now, see it locked right there. I'm not sure what that is. It spins backwards all the time. Alright, now it's spinning frontwards. I'm not sure why it does that. Maybe the shoes are not in the perfect position. Don't know if I should take this caliper off, take the rotor off, and take a look at the way those shoes are positioned. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. Maybe only this side wasn't adjusted quite right. See how that works for me. Man, the Volvo crank jack is starting to wear me out. I'm going to have to break down and get a decent floor jack. All this work I'm doing jacking these cars up and down. Whoo wee. Let me go in here see if I can adjust the timing on this car and see if I have any compression. Time to check in with Betsy. For those of you that don't know Queen B, that's Queen B, a limited edition yellow 850T5R95 model. Man, those things are getting very desirable to get. And I went to the junkyard that day and seen that they had a lot of things cleaned out around their crusher. So I asked the guy at the junkyard if I could do a photo op with Queen B. I pulled Queen B in front of the crusher, took a couple pictures, and posted that silly post about it being crushed. So, no, not being crushed, just a photo op. Very few people get to take a picture of their car in front of a crusher, man. Not sure if you guys remember this. My friend Paulo in the D.C. area, Alexandra, met a gentleman that owned this nice V70 GLT and kept in touch with him told him he'd be interested in the car if he ever decided to sell well somebody replaced the timing belt for him didn't advise them to change the water pump one time and this car has jumped time water pump seized up it said 152,000, so it actually may have been past its second timing belt replacement recommendation. The second belt should have been replaced at 140. I'm not sure if that was done. Let's see if we can find a sticker and go from there. It suffers from the chronic hood won't open situation. One of the improvements Volvo did for 98 V70s. 97 in Europe. You gotta pull it twice, hold it several seconds, let it go slowly, hope it don't relatch. Come out here, try to pull it up again. If it's still latched, you got to uh, press something under there, then release it, so I'm gonna fix that. Somebody had something screwed there at one time, and it looked like it cracked the thing, so they mm -hmm. removed it. But that needs, something needs to be screwed there. Oh, the pad is missing from up here. Well, that's interesting. I think I just got one of those from the junkyard. So I'm going to put that back. Also, the hood release is all busted up here. Tied up with string and all that stuff. I got that stuff in the house. So I'm going to go replace that real quick. You guys might want to take a close look at this stuff on your car. If it's looking beat up or this squeezy latch here is cracked replace it before you get locked out of your hood have to struggle with this thing i just had to lubricate the one on byron's car up here his latch up there was rusted so tight it wouldn't even 
move. So I had to lubricate it real good and the rest of his was okay. Maybe I had replaced a piece in the past. But let me go get this piece I got in the house real quick and replace that. So already in just approaching the car, we experienced suffering from three of the wonderful improvements that they did on this model. That latch is different from the 850. These latches are different from the 850. And uh, what was the third thing? I can't remember. I forgot that quick. It doesn't appear that I have that locking pin piece for up there. So I'm just going to install this lower piece down here. With the very top of that plastic piece missing, with this handle on here, it wouldn't push this up far enough to get this to unlatch. So I'm going to leave it like it is so when I pop the hood, I have to push it up with my thumb to get it to release the hood. So come over here. We have the timing belt is loose. Not sure how many teeth it jumped, but it probably jumped plenty. I'm going to release that tensioner, pull that out of the way, try to see if I can get that crank on the mark and these cams on the mark. It, the belt cut the cover here and then I'll probably replace the water pump. Maybe just bolt a water pump on there and see if I can get, crank it and get compression. I probably won't put a gasket or nothing on there and just use a use water pump just to see if this thing still has compression. I used to think it was a hundred percent valve damage if your timing belt came loose. However, I've talked to a few people that say that they've had timing belts come loose, they put it back together, and they've been fine. Ever since. Forty thousand plus miles. So it's probably a 90% chance that you got bent valves, but we'll see if this one's bent. See if we can join that rare rank. But as you can see, there's no coolant in the coolant reservoir. And again, this water pump is seized. The idler turns and the tensioner turns. These things were probably replaced when the last timing belt was done. I don't see a sticker, but if I see one, I'll let you know. Kept having issues with my Craftsman ratchet wrench. So I got a little Husky. See how that works for me. And it came with sockets, so that's nice. Little extension. I was looking for a swivel, but couldn't find one. Anyway, let me break these water pump bolts loose. Get that water pump out of the way. And go from there. Didn't know if you guys noticed this corrosion on this battery. The battery post screw is loose. Positive and negative. So somebody just pushed them on there and didn't tighten them down. And that corrosion is probably caused because the connection wasn't real tight. Got to make sure your connections are tight. Also, battery clip is missing down there. I got one of those I'll put on there. I had cleaned that off. I borrowed the mass airflow sensor to ship to somebody. I got to replace that. And I parted out the flasher button. I went to the junkyard to get one of those and all three cars it was missing. So I need to find one of those. The best way to deal with the water pump is to raise this engine mount down here so that you can reach those water pump bolts easier. I haven't done that. I'll think about it if I have any issues getting this water pump out of here. So when the water pump seized it locked up the timing belt the timing belt cut through the timing belt cover and of course the engine stopped because the car was out of time and the camshaft sensor senses that. I always try to tell people if you have a water pump like this with cogs missing it's the original water pump replace it as soon as you see it. Don't wait Till it's time to replace the timing belt just replace this water pump before it locks up your engine this one only made it 152,000 miles so I'm gonna pull this water pump try to get this engine back in time install another water pump install a timing belt see if this car will crank and start from the looks of this crank 
it's just two teeth advance from the mark on the oil pump. So I'm going to roll it back two teeth. Hopefully, if the valves are out of the way, it'll roll back for me. Once I get this timing set on this crank, these two teeth, I can move the cams anywhere I want them to get the cams in line and then install the water pump and timing belt. The cams were about 180 degrees out. That's where the mark was, where the tip of this breaker bar was. So I'm going to use this breaker bar to turn the cams and get them lined up with the proper marks. Now I have to remove this engine cover so I can remove this other timing belt cover here. And as you can see, lots of oil on top of the engine, which is normal. So this oil cap seal is probably bad. Needs to be replaced. Mm, yeah, it feels rock hard. So anyway, let me go ahead and get this front cover removed so I can put this spare cover on that I had in the garage and get this timing belt stuff set. I might have to loosen these fuel lines to get this cover in and out. That's the part of the cover that got cut off of the other timing belt cover when the car jumped time. So here we have it. I have the cover installed. I got the timing set as close as I could to the marks on the camshaft. You could barely see the marks there. Line those up with the notches in the cover and the water pump is off. I got a package from one of my buddies in the Denver area. I think there is a water pump in here. Slightly used water pump. There it is folks. The GMB water pump. Man, if I had to install an aftermarket water pump on my car, this would be it. I actually put one of these on Panther one time. I was driving along the interstate and the water pump on Panther started leaking 258,000 miles. So I stopped at AutoZone. They gave me one of those water pumps. I put it on Panther, drove the car 35,000 miles before I got around to getting that water pump off of it. Would I trust these to go 70,000 miles? Not really. That's why I replaced the one I had on Panther. Because I didn't trust it to last 70,000 miles. You really need to get a Volvo Azen pump on these cars. So, there's the one that I pulled off. As you can see, the impeller actually moved in toward the engine. So, this water pump shaft in there and the clutch kicked in if you can see this one the blades the impeller is closer to the housing and on that other pump those blades are further away from the housing because it kicked in and it seized and locked up you can see very little space in between that sprocket and the housing and on the other one you could actually see more space in between the sprocket and the housing so it's kind of unfortunate the clutch in it fell seized up the pump so that's what i was saying it kicked in you see there you see at least a quarter of an inch from the uh, sprocket to the housing and that one is just about touching the housing there so that's what happened can't let them pumps run forever they just don't last forever they're good pumps but I think they're only good for 10 years. So replace them every 10 years. There you have it. I have that area cleaned off. But I'm getting some kind of gooey, gray, greasy stuff out of the engine where that water pump was. I have no idea what that is. But right inside that water pump uh, hole, that was that stuff. That's the timing mark on there. Timing mark pretty much on there timing mark going down there I'm gonna roll the engine over twice and put the ECU's in fire this thing up see if it starts going around a couple times tensioner is close enough man I feel compression in this engine some of these cylinders got compression so let me go ahead and drop the computer in turn the key see if it starts okay people 
Got the mass airflow sensor hooked up. The battery's already hooked up. We got the computers in. Let's see if this thing will crank and fire. It has some compression when I was turning the crank. It is possible that just a couple of the cylinders have bent valves, so it'll misfire. But let's check it out and see. Fired right up. It feels like it's misfire. So it's got a few bent valves, but it does start and run. I'm gonna hook up the serpentine belt and run it until we get misfire codes. See how it's shaking? It's letting you know you misfire. Probably missing on at least two cylinders. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and pull the spark plugs and do a compression test. She's running, but she's missing. Hmm, those plugs seem like they had their days. Passed through a tune-up. And man, there's something on this oil, on number three, probably just oil. But the top sides are brown. Bottom sides look worn out. This number two wasn't even in tight. It was finger tight. Let me grab the compression gauge and check compression. Cylinder one, 80 PSI, probably got a bent valve. Number two, strong, felt strong, 182. Number three, felt like zero compression. Zero compression, number three. Let's check four. Number four felt pretty good. It was jerking the car. Dang, 195. That's real strong. Number five felt pretty good. 190. Man, that's freaking awesome. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.